Hey, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. It's a Sunday. I'm in the office. Just had to pop in. Um, I want to record this one on soy called the No Joy in Soy. It's probably my fifth time recording it because every time I record it, I go over the allotted amount um, that you can put on YouTube. It's such a huge topic. So I'm going to first say this. If you want to learn more about soy, go to the Weston A. Price Foundation, westonaprice.org. You can get a bunch of these soy um, packets. They're really cheap. Um, also, if you go to my website, go to the resource page, scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see health articles. And there's a ton of different uh, links. Click on soy, and that'll bring you right to a web page with tons of articles and research on soy. Thirdly, if you want to read a great book by Kayla Daniels, PhD, it's called The Whole Soy Story. It's one of the best books out there on soy. It'll give you the whole story, story about soy. So the reason I want to touch upon this is because there's so many myths out there about soy. More importantly, tofu. You know, no one's sitting there and eating soy, you know, directly. It's mostly tofu, things like that. Um, the first myth is that, you know, here in the U.S. we eat a lot of soy. Um, in the China they eat a lot of soy and there's not a lot of cancer. And in the U.S. there's tons of cancer and breast cancer and stuff like that. So eating more soy can help fight cancer. Well, if you do the re research on that, we can put a whammy on that one, okay? Because if you do the research, it shows that most people in China consume about 10 grams a day, but in Japan, they, they basically consume 60 grams a day. The other thing is they don't show you is that in China, there's actually a high incidence of thyroid, pancreatic, liver, and esophageal cancer. So just because they're not getting breast cancer doesn't mean they're not getting cancer. They're getting all these other types of cancers, okay? And an interesting you'll, thing you'll learn is that soy um, formulas or tofu or any type of soy product actually contains trypsin inhibitors which can cause pancreatic and digestive disorders, okay? So that's the first myth. Second is the nutrients. It's fermented. It provides us with tons of nutrients. Um, and then it's a complete protein. Well, whammy. We can put another whammy on that one, okay? The funny thing is that soy is not a complete protein. It actually lacks certain um, essential amino acids, which when the food has all these amino acids, it's a complete protein. Soy lacks methionine and lysine, and sometimes because of the processing of making it, or whatever they're making it, it actually loses cysteine. So it's not a complete protein, and most vegetarians will tell you this, and it's not. I don't care what any vegetarian says. Soy tofu, anything is not a complete protein. Secondly, they think they can get vitamin B12 from soy. Most of the B12 that's in soy is actually a synthetic compound, and it's actually very difficult for the human body to digest. That's why you see most vegetarians that overindulge in tofu and soy have an intrinsic factor, which is a precursor to B12, and a B12 or certain types of anemic, def uh, anemic deficiencies or being anemic, okay, and lack of fatigue. It's because they're not getting the complete proteins. Thirdly, soy formula. This is huge, and we could put about a million whammies on this one because... <clears throat> We're feeding babies soy formula because women are afraid of milk and fat and on and on and on and on and on. Well, it's not a complete protein, number one. It's got a lot of synthetic compounds in it, number two. It's got mega doses of phytoestrogens or isoflavins in it, which is basically estrogen mimickers. So you're giving young babies mega doses of um, estrogen mimickers. Uh, at the same time, they have trypsin inhibitors in them. Trypsin inhibitors actually decrease vitamin um, D, which helps with bone, okay, which could maybe prevent osteoporosis, so it can do that. Trypsin inhibitors also affect pancreatic function and digestive function, okay? At the same time, from processing and making tofu and soy formulas and all this stuff, there's been a lot of research to show there's actually a high amount of magnesium and aluminum okay, in soy formula. So you're giving a baby whose digestive tract, immune system, and liver and brain are not fully developed. A baby's liver doesn't fully develop till about six months, and you're putting toxins in its body, and your baby gets colicky, and you wonder why, okay? Well, if the baby's digestive system and liver are not up to par, and you put toxins in a baby's body, anytime you put a toxin in any human's body, the way the body gets rid of it is with diarrhea, Okay, our bodies speak to us. You don't just get diarrhea because God waved a wand and just said, hey, this guy is going to have diarrhea today. I want him to have a shitty day. No pun intended. But it's you taking something in that the body doesn't need. Another thing is 
if you read the, the book, The Whole Soy Story by Kayla Daniels, she shows that um, high amounts of magnesium in children at such a young age when their brain is not developed, it can get through the blood brain barrier. When their liver is not developed, they can't detoxify it. It builds up and builds up and builds up in the body. And there's been a high correlation with excessive violence cognitive dysfunction and ADHD in young children and one of the reasons not the only reason is because of these high amounts of magnesium okay so if you're feeding your child soy soy formula you might do want to do the research to figure out why okay and maybe figure out a better alternative okay my alternative that I recommend my clients which works well is raw milk raw cream infant cod liver oil coconut oil and infant acidophilus and sometimes if you can get um, raw colostrum um, which is even better because um, that's what you you give a baby is cholesterol. So they need that cholesterol. Okay, they need that fat. Fat from the breast milk helps a baby's digestive system, nervous system, and brain develop. Fat is a precursor, and it literally insulates their systems and helps it develop. Where soy has no fat in it, has no cholesterol. Okay, so there's a lot of issues with that, and that's another myth that it's beneficial for the baby. Another myth around soy formulas is that you know, or it's not a myth, is that it's been shown that when young babies or young women <coughs> um, ingest soy formula, they drink soy milk from Starbucks in their coffees, the soy, because of all these megadoses of isoflavins and, and the phytoestrogens, actually cause an increase in puberty at a young age. They see women getting um, breast development at a young age and um, getting their cycle at a young age. And it's actually, she talks about in her book, Kayla Daniels, she was working with a client who a young girl actually got her cycle at 10 years old, okay? And they're showing in men that when young boys are given these formulas, that it actually inhibits puberty. So they're getting puberty at an older age, okay? And it's causing breast development because when boys go through puberty, they have estrogen buds in their nipples. So it causes breast development. And it causes the testes to not drop to release that surge of testosterone so they go through puberty. So it actually causes a reverse in men, okay? Another thing you're seeing is that soy, tofu, soy formula, anything you can think of, they contain what's called a goitrogen. Soy goitrogens block T4 to T3 conversion, which they're neuroendocrine inhibitors, okay? So when you affect the thyroid, you essentially create a false hypothyroidism, and when you have a false hypothyroidism, you affect the adrenal glands, which in turn affects the female hormones or male hormones, okay? So it decreases them and it slows down the metabolism of the body. It slows everything down. So what you essentially see is fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, weight gain, things like that. Okay, And you're seeing this in younger and younger women. I can tell you from testing and doing lab tests with a lot of my clients, most have adrenal issues, most have hormone problems, and most have hypothyroidism or false hypothyroidism. Okay, So these are some things to look into because it's not helping us, it's actually hurting us. Um, another one is that soy actually contains a, a lot of glutamic acid, which is basically another name for MSG. And there's a million names for MSG. They're just using different names to kind of um, toy with you a little. Okay, So it contains a lot of MSG, which excite the brain cells, which can cause burning out of the neurons in the brain, which can cause cognitive dysfunction. And beside the milling process of making tofu and all these soy formulas, glutamic acid is, is made in the process, they're actually adding it in. And they're not telling you because they're calling it glutamic acid or other names. So do the research, okay? There's a lot of MSG in soy formulas and in tofu and other things like that, okay? Um, I think I've covered a lot of the key points. We could talk for days and days and days about this. There's a lot of people who are probably going to say, well, poo-poo to that. Well, you know, I feel great, I eat soy. Well, you know, most people can only tune into their physical body, Right, And we only tune in when something goes wrong, meaning our arm's about to fall off or we have a pain. Right. Well, there's other things that happen before that physiologically and pathomorphologically, which is physically internally. So our internal body, right? we could say our ligamentous body, our muscular body, our biochemistry body, our endocrine body. But then we go mental, emotional body and spiritual body. So we have all these bodies tune, telling us things all the time, and we only tune into the physical. So you got to think about it. Soy, any type of soy is affecting your body. Okay, It might not be affecting you, but in the next generation and the next generation, it's going to affect big time. So do the research. Go to the websites I recommended, mine, westonaprice.org. Learn more. Read Kayla Daniels' book. And the real point of this is really know what you're putting in the body.